Hi, welcome to the tutorial on how to create box plots using SPSS 18 on a Mac, but it is very similar across different versions and on PCs. So the purposes of creating box plots are to give a visual representation of your data. That way you can see how it is distributed, whether there are outliers, and basically this is the first step to screening your data before conducting any future um, analyses. So let's go ahead and create our first box plot. Go ahead and select Analyze, scroll down to S Descriptive Statistics, and down to Explore. What you'll see here is this menu system, and you'll see the dependent list, factor list, and whether you label cases by, as well as lots of different options. So let's say in this data set, I'm interested in looking at the distribution of my variable of years of education. So that is, I'm interested in knowing what my range of years of education is and whether there are people who are outliers on either end. So go ahead and select that and move it over to the dependent list. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm mostly interested in just seeing the box plot. So in this case, go ahead and select plots unselect stem and leaf here, but if you're more familiar with bar graphs, this is what you could select the histogram option. So go ahead and select continue. Again, I'm only interested in the plots so as to not clutter my output. I'm going to select plots. You can either select OK or paste if you would like the syntax. Go ahead and select OK. Your output should now pop up. You will see your syntax here in the top and you will see that I have 240 individuals in this data set and here is my box plot for the distribution of years of education in this sample. You will see here that the black bar here is the median. This is the lowest value at which it is not an outlier and the highest value at which there is not an outlier. And all of these numbers here indicated by circles indicate outliers to this data set. That is, we have individuals who have a lot more years of education, and we have also individuals who are unusually low in education. So it looks like someone with only seven years of education. So this is the basic box plot. Now let's say you're interested in multiple variables across, let's say, a region of the US. So let's see how we would do that. Go ahead and go to Analyze and we go to Descriptive Statistics again and down to Explore. Let's say I'm also interested in knowing about the number of jobs ever held by an individual. So I'm going to select Number of Jobs and move it over to the Dependent List as well. But in addition to knowing about these variables and the distributions of these variables, I'm interested in looking at it across the different regions of the US. So here's my region variable. I'm going to select it as a factor. Now, previously I did not indicate a label cases by. So these numbers here indicate the line numbers in your data set. So these are not the individual ID numbers that you may have given your sample. So in order to get ID numbers to your sample, you have to select ID and select that over to label cases by. So in the next batch, the cases will be labeled by the ID that you have personally given in your data set. So here is where the box plots options in the plots menu is important. Here what you have is factor levels together or dependent dependence together. When you select factor levels together, you will be viewing your plots according to the factor that you selected. In this case, it is region. So let's go ahead and go with that and take a look at what that looks like in your output. Go ahead and press continue and OK. Go ahead and scroll down. When you select factors together, you'll see this syntax here, compare groups. And this is what you'll get. Per variable, per dependent that you listed, you'll get one box plot that is divided among your factor, which in this case is region. So we selected both years of education 
as well as number of jobs. So you see two box plots here. So what's the point of the other option of dependence together? Let's say you wanted to do side-by-side -side comparisons of how your distributions look for both number of jobs and years of education. That is where that option is useful. Go ahead and go to Analyze again, Descriptive Statistics, and down to Explore. So in this case, I'm going to go to Plots again and select that I want my dependents together. In that case, I want those in my dependent list to appear in the same box plot. So go ahead and press Continue and press OK. And let's take a look at the output. What you'll see here in this um, syntax is the compare variables as opposed to the previous syntax, which was compare groups. So that is the syntax distinction. And what you'll see now is one box plot for our dependents, but still separated by our regions. But now we can do side-by-side -side comparisons if we'd like, just to do a visual informal comparison. And you'll see here that it is noted with different colors. And again, an important part of using a box plot is to identify our outliers. Because I selected for my cases to be labeled by my ID, these numbers that appear here are the ID numbers in my data set. Let's say for instance, I'm really interested in this particular outlier. Perhaps I want to delete it from my um, data set, or perhaps I want to just take a look at it. Perhaps it was a coding error. How can we go ahead and do that? Double click on this chart, and you'll get this chart editor coming up click on this outlier indicator right here. The first click will select all of the um, different outliers, but I only want this one, so click again and click again. And now only this individual is highlighted. Go ahead and right click and go to case. Select that, and now we are on that line of our data set. And now we can take a look at whether it was an error in data entry or if we want to remove that case or whatever it is that you are wanting to do with this outlier. All right, that's it for now. Enjoy creating box plots.